Welcome back. This is Deborah. I should say I'm glad to be back. I know I've been MIA for some time, and as you can see by my surroundings, I'm not in my usual space. I have been really working through some of the energies that have been moving around the planet, given everything that we are experiencing, and um, it's really been something that has had an impact on me in a positive way, but it's kind of like a double-edged sword. So that's what this video is all about. I'm going to be sharing with you ways to elevate yourself, to take your life into higher levels of grace and ease and flow and to be able to look past what's going on in current times so that you can create the life, the business, the relationships, the health, the body, all of it. You know, there's no trade-off. You can have it all, baby doll, and I'm going to cover that in today's video. So before we get started, um, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's what tells YouTube that my content inspires you and has value, and then they populate it more so more people can find it. Also, there's a little bell, and it's right next to the subscribe button, so please hit the bell because then as I upload new videos, and I promise to be more frequent, um, as I upload more videos, of course, you'll get that notification. All right, so let's dig into today's video, and I'm going to cover off the three biggest ways that you sabotage yourself and keep yourself from being, doing, and having the life you want to experience. But they're really simple, so they're not complicated, and you're going to be able to implement this immediately. Before I get started, I just want to clarify what's been happening with me and just my adjustment to everything that's going on in the world because the energies are changing. And I'm not even referencing so much as like literally what's happening in terms of politics and health and whatnot. You know, that's a whole other conversation. What I'm referencing is literally the energy. Like the energy has increased. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that the energy on the planet has a higher vibrational stance to it than it's ever had in the past? Because that's exactly what I'm talking about. And so what's happened for me, while all of these energies have really increased, my my sensitivity and psychic capacity has ramped up super high in it and it's good it's really good i mean it's what makes me so you know good at what i do for my clients the uh, flip side of that the double-edged sword side of that is that it also makes me extremely sensitive to energy, to other people's energies, to people's emotions, to emotions on the planet, to, I mean, I pick up on all of it. And so what I've done is I hit the road um, about three weeks ago. I just started driving, working from my laptop, and getting out in nature. You know, I, I work and then I go for walks, or I work and then I go for a run, and I always find myself you know, in this, like, like this cute little cabin I have, it's right on a river, and um, today I was out for a walk before I recorded this, just centering myself and, and getting into that place of, you know, how do I want to articulate this message, and, and I, an eagle, the most extraordinarily beautiful eagle just came right out of this tree, flew right over my head and, you know, circled around before landing in another tree and I was like, yeah, that's, that's my blessing for the day. So with all that sensitivity going on, honestly, I just haven't been able to be in front of the camera. It's not that I haven't had stuff I wanted to share, 
Doesn't this sound like another video I recorded about two months ago? Because <laughs> I'm pretty much saying the same thing. So look, if I go MIA, forgive me, and please stay with me, stay with my channel, because we're, we have plans for developing it further. Um, right now I've been working on a website and it's going to pop really soon. So, you know, we're getting it all done for you, I promise. And lots of really cool stuff happening. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button and definitely hit the bell. And then as I do upload more content. Plus you can follow me on Instagram because every day I do a one minute thought for the day. And sometimes I bring out my tarot cards and I'll do an energy of the day. And then I also put that onto my LinkedIn profile and onto Facebook. So definitely follow me on Instagram. It's NEI for change. Okay, so let's dive into this particular topic before I lose the light of day. So there's three things that we all do as human beings. So there's, you know, you're not a bad person. It just is the nature of being a human being that actually sabotages our ability to tap into and express and experience our greatness. And so the number one thing that we do as human beings is we have this false perception of time. We, it's a false premise where we think that time actually exists and that things will get better in the future. Well, some people think, think things are going to get worse in the future, which is another, which is a whole other show, right? Whole other episode. But when we, when we look at our life now or our experiences now, and let's say we don't like them, then we have a tendency as human beings to look toward the future and say, you know, down the road, things are going to get better. Um, next week, I know things I'm going to have a breakthrough. Tomorrow is going to be a better day The you know, the future is bright and in front of us. When you do that, you actually separate yourself and cut yourself off from your, your abundance, your, your ability to experience everything you want to experience in this present moment. Now, I know it's kind of difficult because we have an entire existence, an entire timeline. There I am using the word time again, right? So we have this entire timeline that's built around past, present, and future. It's how, as children, we have been taught to relate to life. And so we'll look at our past and we'll think, okay, this wasn't so great, or this was better, like the good old days, whatever our internal dialogue is around that. Um, and then we'll look at the future and we'll go, you know, things are going to get better, you know, things are going to, like, we're going to have a breakthrough, I know it's coming, and I'm not suggesting that you don't look at the future and pre-pave possibilities. In fact, that's a really good tool to use, the whole pre-paving where you're envisioning what you're creating and how your life is going to turn out as a result of it. You know, it's kind of like having a vision board, only it's like in your mind, in a meditative state on a daily basis. That the thing is, though, it takes you out of present time. And so it also, by taking you out of present time, is it actually pushes what it is that you're seeking to create further out away from you. So yes, you move toward the future, but then the future moves toward the future. If you get what I'm saying, it's like there's like this continuation, this continuum of this timeline, which means that you never really get there. You never really get there. And that's why your goals and, you know, the charmed life that you want to live just like never really pops. For you. So here's what you do. Stay focused in present time and stay in appreciation of what it is in present time. Now, 
you can be an appreciation of what it is in terms of what you're bringing in. So you can treat it like, hey, I really appreciate this uptick in my finances. So let's say you're asking for more money to come into your life. Instead of saying, you know, I'm going to have more money, I'm going to, you know, create more money, I'm, I'm going to, um, a lot of people use the phrase, earn more money, please take that out of your vocabulary. But when you, when you, anytime you say, I am going to, or someday I will, you actually discard the ability for it to happen in the now, because there is only now. There is no past, there is no future, there's only now. So you want to start talking about the future as if it is now, and to do it with appreciation, because appreciation is a higher vibrational energy than even gratitude. You know, gratitude is like, when we're grateful for something, usually it's because we've overcome something of a lesser vibration, so therefore we're grateful now to be at that, this next vibration, right? But when you're in appreciation, appreciation is just pure love. It's just pure love. So when you're in that moment of appreciation, and you're appreciating, appreciating the very thing that you want to have come as if it's already here in the now. Then you're celebrating the now and the universe can orchestrate and rally around that thing and produce it for you. Now, I'm not saying the universe does this for you like Santa Claus delivers your present if you've been a good boy or girl. I'm not saying that the universe is this thing outside of you that delivers your request on a silver platter. That's not what I'm saying. You, you are the universe. You are a energetic element, aspect, flow, don't know how else to say it, of the universe. You are the universe. So, your energy, so let me say it another way, your energy actually shifts to allow in that very thing that you have placed into your timeline, which is now. Hope that brings it kind of all together for you. Okay, so that's the number one thing that most people do to keep themselves from being, doing, and having the life they want. All right, number two. Number two is judgment. Oh my gosh, I cannot talk about this enough because we are taught... <laughs> to judge. We are taught to look outside of ourselves and to judge things good, bad, right, wrong. And when we do that, we polarize our experiences. It's like we polarize our lives. So we're saying it's either good or it's bad. It's either right or it's wrong. And then we get when we get into the wrongness, well, even when you get into the rightness, you're still, there's a two sides to the coin. You can't be in the rightness of something without pulling in the energy of the wrongness. You just can't. So the two are combined. They're absolutely one and the same. You see, what judgment does is, judgment is like a nominalization. You know, when you think of the meta model in neuro linguistic programming, it talks about nominalizations. And what nominalizations do is they freeze things in time. They freeze attitudes, they freeze thought processes, they freeze emotional um, programs, they freeze things in time which keeps 
you stuck in the experience of those energies over and over and over and over again. So essentially, yeah, we are creating our next reality, but it's the same reality that we are experiencing. So if your life looks the same now as it did like five years ago, it, that's probably what you're doing. You're probably nominalizing and therefore you're recreating the same kinds of, you're recreating the energy of those experiences over and over and over, which could then be different people, different places, but it's the same vibe, you know, it's the same emotion, it's the same lack, it's the same struggle, it just might be with a new person, or it might be in a new town, or a new country, or whatever. Okay, so, the nominalizations are actually judgment, and when we look outside of ourselves and we say, it's easy for that person, we're judging. We're judging them, or we're judging us. So therefore, we've just blocked ourselves from moving ourselves forward. Um, when we when we look at others and we criticize and we find fault to justify where we are, then that nominalization definitely will stop you dead in your tracks. And the very thing that you're noticing in someone else that you're condemning, criticizing, judging, etc., actually ends up coming back on you and keeping you from moving forward. And that energy can get super thick. Like it can completely stall you in your life where you know that you're capable of so much more, but it ain't happening. You know, nothing's moving forward in your life. And it's just, you're regurgitating those old ideas, those old, um, points of view. Those are the words. All right. So there's, so those are the two top things. Now, the third thing is that we look out at our experiences that we're currently having and we get stuck there. You know, so if you look at your life and let's say you don't have enough money and you keep staring at that, because you want it to change or you keep focusing on that because you want it to get better but it can't because you're too focused on it how can something change into something new if you keep focusing on the old thing and you never reach energetically for the new thing you see so if you have something in your life or things in your life that you want to change, maybe you want a, a fabulous lover, you know, or maybe you want more money or maybe you want a sexier body or just better health or you want to live in a new place, whatever that is for you. It could be a new home, new town, new country, you know, whatever, then it's about connecting to the energy of the new thing and treating that like it's already a done deal. And then ignoring your current circumstances, no matter how hard that is, you know, and I know for some people it's like, well, you don't get it. You know, Deborah, we, you know, our phone's blowing up with bill collectors or, or whatever. But that's the biggest growth you could ever create for yourself, you know, is to really, truly train your mind, train your mind to focus on what it is you would like to create instead of the way things are. Oh, if I could just like, you know, <laughs> get in there and do some neurological repatterning on you, 
that would wake that up in you, it would be so much fun. It's totally doable. Because it's just about that, you know, it's about ignoring what is and having like grit and fortitude and tenacity and, you know, just stubborn power and making yourself go from looking at the way things are that suck to really focusing on the energy of the way things you want them to be as if they already are a done deal. Oh, there you go. There's the three big top whoppers that if you put these things into practice, you'll totally and completely change your life. You know, I live in a metropolis and there's times when I would look out the window with everything that's going on and I would wish that I wasn't there, that I was, you know, out in nature. So I'd go hiking up in the mountains, uh, just outside of the city, and it, it, it wasn't quite enough, you know? And then I said to myself, why don't I just go on a road trip instead of looking out the window and wishing? Why don't I just use some of these tools and see myself having these really cool experiences in nature? And here I am, third week on the road. And for me, it's, it's about the simplicity. I mean, I'm staying in this really cool log cabin. It has a, a little wood stove and I've got all this empty, you know, grassland around me and there's this super beautiful river flowing past. And my first night here when I rolled in, there was a deer on the road, literally right outside where I parked my car. Like I had my own personal deer, <laughs> you know? And then the next night I rolled in after going out for some food and and then I had my own personal fox. And then the third night I had my own personal kitty cat. It's like, oh, please, just do these steps. Do these steps every day. I've been recording some meditations. I haven't released them yet. I think I'm probably going to put them up on video. They're just audio, and um, and I will keep you posted on that. And I promise I'm going to record more frequently and get some more of these tools up here for you. So thank you so much for being a part of my life and for being so patient with me as I've taken several weeks to record this latest video and um, you're still here and you're still sharing it with your friends and I really need you out. So thank you. Have a blessed, blessed rest of your day whenever you're listening to this and I will talk to you later. My name is Deborah Peters and this is the Deborah Peters Show. Okay.